uh, right now i have registered for three courses which are of nine credits overall so the overall fees for this nine credits have been waived off because of my teaching assistant hi likach welcome to the yocket connect series i would want to begin this interaction understanding what is your background like so i would want to know uh, what in which course have you done your bachelor's in which year this was then did you work in india or did you directly apply for your masters and in which university are you studying right now yes hi uh, so hello everyone and uh, my name is lekash patra and i have done my undergrad in uh, electrical engineering to be precise and my main focus was mostly on power systems and power electronics uh, i do have some prior uh, work experience in india too uh, but uh, for planning masters uh, it was planned during my undergrad itself but i was working for approximately like uh, two and a half years and then uh, i'm here in ut austin actually and even here my main uh, research focus is on uh, power systems applications and power systems optimization i would say and uh, one of my main, one of the main reason uh, i have chosen ut austin would be the lab experience i would say because even before coming here uh, i am aware of the professor and what is the research going on here so i was directly in contact with the professor and uh, the research which which he does and the research which is going on with the other professor was uh, uh, it was inspiring me and so this was one of the reason i went to ut austin so that brings me to the next question which is in case if you did not get an admit from ut austin which were the other options that you were looking at oh that's a nice question so actually i have applied around uh, 10 universities if i'm not wrong uh, which are around multiple countries i would say so most of them were majorly based on us i have applied to some of the universities like cmu georgia tech and purdue which i, I have been rejected from georgia tech and purdue i have got an admit from cmu but uh, i was i have applied for an msba degree actually like uh, it's a combination of masters and a uh, mba degree actually but <clears throat> unfortunately because of covid that program has been cancelled that year itself so i have not i have just our only an ms admit which i am not interested in now so the other options if i have not been to ut austin were like uh, tamu texas and m university and a uh, university of minnesota and uh, north carolina state university i want to have a very candid opinion of yours of how is the course going like are you finding it difficult is it manageable how is it going like in ut at ut austin Oh that's a good thing actually uh, I am sure uh, most of the viewers should be uh, aware of the sine wave you can not wrong so it will goes up and down and up and down so I mean right now that's my feeling actually uh, in the last semester I feel the course load was a bit hectic uh, because I was taking some uh, courses depending on uh, operations research course to linear programming course so that was a bit a uh, tough course uh, when I compare from my side uh, but this semester I'm completely focusing on my own uh, core subjects overall course I would say yes you will enjoy the course and uh, try to pick some of the courses which depends on uh, projects because you will get to work on multiple projects instead of uh, which has uh, some standard exams because uh, standard exams are like similar exams which you have back in uh, india and other countries too but when we get an opportunity to work on projects we will get to know something new because uh, we will be reading some extensive research papers and research publications i would say which may not be of uh, that particular professor who is teaching so i would say pick up the courses which has some projects and uh, definitely you will learn a lot so uh, when we are applying for gre and toefl another important document uh, that uh, makes or breaks the application is the sop so if i have to ask you as as per you it could be anything it could be extra curriculars academics or whatever you think would be the right answer for this what was the highlight of your statement of purpose oh my highlight for the statement of purpose would be my uh, research publications i would say i i uh, i mean as i'm from electrical background uh, the famous uh, research publication would be in my sense would be uh, the ieee paper what we call so i do have some three papers in uh, ieee so like this was the overall uh, highlight of my uh, sop and the other thing would be uh, i am silver medalist from my own department so this would be the other uh, highlight and i belong i am i have completed my undergrad from an iit so i think this might add little value but i'm not sure but uh, silver med- uh, silver medalist and the uh, Business publication of the main part. Uh, any Indian student who is planning to go abroad, irrespective of what their financial condition is like, they compare two things. First, what is the course fee like, and second, after you get a job, 
what would the salaries like so that how soon can you recover the entire amount that you spent because sometimes students also take heavy education loans for this so i want to understand what was your research what what did you find out what is the course fee at ut austin and once you get the job what is the range in which uh, people can earn after ms in operations research so okay now this might take some uh, bit time actually so what happens is uh, when you are planning for a university what i would suggest is you you just make a list of universities and what is your per semester fees and what is your cost of living and just uh, also make sure like uh, what is the overall course duration not on an average the course duration is of 2 years but you can also complete it in one and a half year if you want to but that entirely depends on the minimum number of credits which you want so what happens in uh, whereas right now i am in uti austin so what uti austin offers is we have like multiple number of ta positions teaching assistant positions and uh, re- research assistant positions and graduate research assistant positions and also even in teaching assistant positions there are two particular types of positions one would be the actual teaching assistant position and this is just for the name sake so the actual teaching assistant position what happens is you will be paid a prefixed salary for every month and along with that you will be getting a trb tuition reduction benefit so right now i am employed for 20 hours as a ta so i am getting a tuition reduction benefit so what tuition reduction benefit will i be getting the whole course uh, fee for example uh, right now i have registered for three courses which are of nine credits overall so the overall fees for the this nine credits have been waived off because of my teaching assistant so i just have to pay some uh, basic uh, 125 dollars or something the international student uh, security or not security international student admission fee sort of thing and the insurance but regarding the insurance if you have been employed for 20 hours even your insurance is waived off so to be precise in my second semester i have paid fees around 125 dollars which eventually translates into 10000 rupees i would say so what what my main suggestion would be like uh, whenever you are planning on going to a university first inquire like uh, what are the ta options or what are the research options uh, which students might be available so whenever you are going to a university uh check your uh, ta and the funding thing actually like whether can you get an ta opportunity or a position with a professor like what is the probability of that maybe and even if you are getting any ta or a position what is the uh, whether you are getting any tuition or some benefit or not because i have one of my friend in michigan who is also a ta but he's he's being paid around a prefix salary for month but he's not getting any tuition or some benefit so it's like eventually he's getting paid less So whenever you are planning for a university, check this TA or anything. What is the probability, and whether you are eligible for a tuition reduction benefit or not. So after finalizing all these factors, we will come up with the university. And regarding the financial loans, I would say so. What happened is uh, there are some uh, in, uh, Indian fi- Indian uh, education uh, trust. I would say the one would be uh, K C Mahindra scholarship loan. I would say. Oh, no, KC Mahindra offers only scholarship actually, whereas uh, the Tata Endowment Scholarship, GN Tata Endowment Scholarship, it offers a loan and a scholarship. I have been awarded a loan uh, from them actually, so you can uh, you can just search, uh, give it a Google search, GN Tata Endowment and KC Mahindra Scholarship, and uh, you will get to know them. The next thing, what matters is your location of your job. Uh, so, for example, right now, if I'm staying in Austin and if I'm getting around 80k, I think that's a good package. But whereas, if you're planning on uh, living in California and getting a 80k, that would be very less and it will be a bit hard to survive. So, definitely, whenever you are getting an offer or whenever you are planning on uh, settling, just don't compare the money, but compare the location. I would want to leave you with one last question, and that is a very quick list of three things. three learnings that you had through this entire journey of yours it could be something new that you learned that might benefit indian students or it could be a mistake that you committed that they should not commit right so i just want you to list three things you cannot it's fine if you don't elaborate on them but if i have to ask you to list one two three what would these three things be the first thing is uh, enquire about the college and the labs and the professors to be precise like uh, for example if you are planning on applying to one particular university what is the main motive behind that is it just getting any master's degree from from us or is it just getting a master's degree from that particular college or are you interested in working with in some particular lab or some particular professor be precise and then go ahead because if you just want to go and get a master's in us It doesn't matter whether you are attending UT or Tam or uh, Minnesota. It doesn't matter at all. So just uh, try to be precise. Like, uh, what do you want to do uh, while coming to masters? And the next thing would be like, for example, why are you pursuing masters? Whether do you have any plans for PhD, or do you want to just focus on some research uh, during your masters, or getting a job is your final motive? 
so if your job if your motive is finally getting a job okay i think a uh, university matters a little bit more not that much maybe it matters around 5 to 10% that's it because eventually yeah, eventually you will be getting jobs uh, so it doesn't matter at all but if you are planning on uh, doing a research under some particular professor i would suggest contact them before uh, applying to the university itself like what current research is going on get uh, read some their uh, read some of their new recent publications i would say and see whether those particular research publications are of your interest or not and then plan according to that and the third thing which i want to main focus is finances uh so even before coming to us well, my mindset was okay i have i am spending this much money even during the applications and uh, sending transcripts and maybe sending some hard documents or applying to everything for gre and toefl we will be calculating oh i am spending around 15000 to 16000 rupees on gre if i am not wrong sorry i can't remember the exact value so i am spending this much money wow 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 wow, wow. so but after coming to us right now if uh, it's been around 8 months or 9 months i would say and right now if you ask my perspective we have spent around 160 dollars i would say that's pretty less what we have spent on gre because uh, we will be spending a lot more money here because because of the rent etc etc so i mean you need to change you will ch- eventually you will change your perspective but uh, don't just restrict yourself by multiplying everything into 75 that's one of the standard mindset which uh, i had and most of the people have here in us so i would suggest don't multiply into 75 you can always plan your finance finances you can always uh, take your education loan i would say just plan that okay on an average i'm going to spend this much amount in in, in a month and just try to stick to that that's it and eventually that right, right now we limit what i use is of uh, 900 dollars and sometimes i reach around 900 sometimes very rarely i would say but plan your budget like uh, this will be your rent this will be your utilities and this will be for food and just try to categorize them and put some miscellaneous extra funds too because that will help you eventually and don't multiply by 75 so that's it